Okay, we begin in the Gemara and Avkuf Mem Vav Amit Beis, three lines up from the bottom of the Yomud, Mantana. Got it? Kuf Mem Vav Amit Beis. Yeah? Mantana Lahod Atana Rabbanon. Who is the Tana for this that the Rabbanon learned here in this Braisa? Okay, the Gemara here is going to bring something that's connected to the Mishnah that we learned here before in this Amud that speaks about a concept called Umdana. When a person passes away and he's giving everything away, He's, he's, everything. So if he gives everything away, but then he recovers from this illness, so then we say that the matana that he gave away is bottle. Because it's understood that he only gave it away because he wasn't expecting to recover. But now that he recovered, then the whole matana is bottle. So that's a concept of umdana. And the Gemara brought other cases of umdana as well. One of the cases was by Rav Shimon ben Menasye in a case where a person's son went overseas and you heard that this child passed away. And because of this, the father went and gave away all his properties to someone else. And he finds out that his son is still alive. So Rav Shimon ben Menasye in such a case also says that what he gave away is null and void because now he sees his son is alive. So the Gemara now brings another b'raise in, in connection to this. So, man tan ala detan rabbanon harei shahay yachayla umutl b'mit, a person was very, not well and he's in bed. V'amru lai, and they asked him, nechasecha l'mi, who should your properties go to after you pass away? V'amru lahan, and this person expresses himself and says as follows, day misha yesh li ben, I uh, thought that I would have a son, but ach shof she'en li ben, but now that I have no son, so nechasei l'plaini, my properties should go to so and so. Or a similar case, a person is, is not well in bed, and they asked him, his property should go to who? So he answered and said, I thought my wife is expecting a baby, but but now that she's not expecting, and therefore I have no baby, no child, so my property should go to so-and-so. But then, we find out, that he did have a son. Or we find out that his wife was pregnant. So in this case, the matana that he said he's giving away is not a matana. Because it turns out that he does have a son. Now, what's this based on? This person gave it away. So he didn't clearly say, I'm only giving it away, almanas, that it's true that I don't have a son. He said, I'm giving it as a matana. But nevertheless, once we find out he has a son, we're going to say that it's not a matana. Says the Gemara, Leim, shall we say, Rav Shimon ben Menasi, he, v'loi Rabbana. This b'raise, in this kind of case, this is Rav Shimon ben Menasi's opinion that says that we, even if the person does not say something explicitly, but nevertheless, we can follow a umdana, we can follow a, a, a presumption based on, on what we see he's doing, what he means to do. And v'loi Rabbana, but not according to the Rabbana. The Rabbana say that we don't follow this kind of umdana. In the story before, when a person's son went away, and now we thought that he was not alive, and he gave away a gift, and everyone else, and now his son turns up, so over there, the Rabbana said, we don't follow him. Whatever he gave away is given away. So the here, the Rabbana as well, will say that he gave it away and it's too bad. Even if later we find out he has a son. He says the Gemara, no, this case is different. I feel a tamer Rabbana. In this case, even the Rabbana would agree. Because over here, the person is pretty much expressing clearly that he's only doing this because he has no son. Because When the person says, I thought I have a son, or I thought I should have a son, but I don't have a son, and therefore I'm giving it away. So he's not uh, just giving away a gift and he's thinking in his mind that uh, because my son is not alive. He's expressing, I thought I would have a son, but I don't have a son, and therefore I'm giving it away. So in such a case, even the Rabbana would agree that if it turns out he does have a son, then what he said is nothing. Then, then he wants to go to his son. <coughs> what was the one that asked this question to even think that Chachamim would disagree in this case? Why? How could he even think that Chachamim would disagree? It's pre- he's expressing himself pretty clearly here. And says the Gemara, not necessarily. He still didn't say clearly that I'm only giving this gift on a condition that I don't have a son. So Mao the time I would think to say, When he starts off the sentence and he says that I thought I would have a son and I don't have a son, he's not saying that in connection to the actual gift that he's going to give later as a, as a stipulation in the gift. He's just starting off by saying and expressing his anguish that he's passing away from the world and he has no son. And then he goes on to give away the gift, and there, when he actually is giving the gift, he doesn't say any condition at all, and therefore over there, Chacham would say that it's given unconditionally. Kamash Malan, and therefore, the Gemara here is saying, no, that in this case, the Chacham will agree, that because he starts off speaking about the fact that he thought he has a son, and he doesn't, so it's, con- it's considered to be like one sentence, like one statement, that he's making it clear that it's only a condition, it's only a gift on condition that he does not have a son. 
Now, now the Gemara goes back to discussing the source of the very concept of what's called a matana of Shechiv Mirah, which was in the Mishnah here before and also in the previous Patek, that when a Shechiv Mirah gives a matana, Chachamim instituted, or actually we'll see here the source of this, that one, when a Shechiv Mirah gives a matana, there's no Kenyan necessary. The Amistad will see later here in this Patek that some cases where you do need a Kenyan, some cases where you don't need a Kenyan, but there are cases by Shechiv Mirah, when he says he's giving a gift, you don't need any Kenyan, it takes effect automatically. So, and it takes effect, mamish like a Yerusha, that that person that you gave the gift to is like he's yashining from you. So now the question is, what's the source of this? So here, the Gemara brings a few sources that from Sukkim and the Teira. I don't know that this concept that a Shechim says he wants to give a gift, it's like a matonim and a Teira. And now that person that receives the gift is like your Yerush, it's like he's yashining from you. Uh, Taisus here actually says that the Psukim the Gemara is going to bring here now are not a real source, it's just an asmachta. Meaning it is a Takanas Chachamim, but Chachamim relied it on these languages of the Psukim. But there are other Rishayim that say that according to these Amiraim that we're about to learn, that it is actually Menatayra. Shanema, the Pasik says, The Pasik there says, if a person doesn't have a son, so then you'll transfer the Yerusha to a daughter. So the, so the question, the Diyak of the Gemara is, that word Vahavartem is extra, because it, it says in the Pasik, Guven Einloi, he has no son. It could, could have just said that Nachlasi Lebitay, that the Nachla goes to the daughter without Vahavartem es. So therefore the Gemara says what we learn out from this is, what's Vahavartem? Yesh Lucha Avara Acheres. Vahavartem is speaking about another transfer, besides the daughter. She Kizu, that's similar to this. Ve'ezuzu, what is this? Matmat Neshchiv Mira. When a person passes away and he says he wants to give a Mat Neshchiv Mira, the words are mamish like a Yerusha, that that person yarshins from him. Rav Nachman, Amir Abba Baravue, Rav Nachman has another source, Mehocha, in the Pasuk over there, the next Pasuk it says that if he has no daughter, but mainly Bas, then it says in the Satan as Nachlo Selechov, the, the Yerusha is given to the brothers. So the word as when the Satan is also extra, could have just said, the mainly Bas, Nachlo Selechov. So what do we learn out from when the Satan, the Yesh Lachon Esina Cheres, there's another gift, she Kizu, that's similar to a Yerusha, Ve'ezu Zu, Matmat Neshchiv Mira. This is the Matan of Neshchiv Mira. Those are the two sources. The Gemara explains why each Amayda didn't want to learn from the other Pasuk that the other Amayda learned out from. But Rav Nachman, my time alone, why didn't he learn out from the extra word, Vavartem? Because Ahu, that extra word is not extra. We learn from it something. We learn from this, what Rebbe learned out. The Tanya, we learned in Abrai, so we had it in the previous Patek here. The Rebbe, Yoyme, Rebbe says, In all the places in the Tere, when it speaks about the Yerusha, it uses the term Nesina, that it's given. Here the Tere uses this term that you're transferring over. Why has it changed the Loshan? The answer is because you don't have a situation where someone is inheriting a father, where now this Yerusha is going to end up by a different Shevet, only in the case of a daughter. Why? What happens when a person's daughter inherits him? So then it could end up by a different Shevet, because now her son or her husband could inherit her. That's why it says, so based on this word, this is the source that a son inherits a mother, or that a husband inherits a wife. So therefore we learn out something else from Vavarta. But Rabzeire, my time alone me unasatem. Why didn't Rabzeire learn out from the extra word unasatem? Says the Gemara, unasatem is not an unusual word, but the Gemara before was saying that it's an extra word. So Rabzeire holds urche de krohu. The word unasatem is not an extra word. That's the way the Pasik speaks. It says, mainly bas unasatem is nachlo selechov. So it's not considered to be an extra word. Another source the Gemara brings, and this is from Sukkim, and uh, the Gemara is going to here going to bring from the Sukkim and Nevi'im, Rab Menashe by Yirmi Yama Mahocha. It says in the Pasuk, Yama Mehem Cholach Chizkiyo Lamos Chizkiyo was uh, sick and he was about to die. Vayovi Elov Yishayo Benomet Zanovi Yishayo and Novi comes to him. Vayeme Elov and he says to him, Koyam Hashem. That this is what David says: Tzav lebeischa. You should uh, give a tzavo. You should command to the p- people of your house what should be done with your properties. Kimei sato, <coughs> because you're passing away. So we see here in the language of the pasuk, he, t- he told him tzavo, like we always use the term tzavo, which means but tzavo balma. A person just commands before he passes away what should be, even without a kinyan, and it'll take effect. Rami by Mar Mehocha. There's another pasuk where it says Vachitoifel. Achitoifel was a servant of David Melech. And then afterwards, he rejoined the rebellion of Avshalom against David Melech. And then when he saw that the rebellion of Avshalom is uh, going to fail, so then he went and committed suicide himself. Mm-hmm. And it says in the Pasuk, mm-hmm. 
that his advice to, to Avshalom and his rebellion against David Amalek was not uh, listened to. So he, he saw that it's going to fail. He went and saddled his donkey. He went to his house, to his city, and he commanded to his children what should be done. And then he was strangled to death and he died. So again in this Pasuk we see, it says in the Pasuk of Ayitzav, that just by commanding, by saying, without a Kenyan, it takes effect, mamish like a Yerusha. Since the Gemara brought up Achitoifel, so the Gemara is going to bring another thing that it says, that Achitoifel said before he passed away. It's here, that he commanded to the people of his house. So what, what is one of the things that he said? So, Three things Achitoifel told his children. The first was, Do not get involved in any machlaikis. Others add, Machlaikis uh, based David, because over here, his downfall was the fact that he joined the rebellion against David Amelech. Mm. So he said, do not get involved in any argument of Machlaikis. Va'al timrudu b'malchus based David. Do not rebel against the kingdom of the house of David. <coughs> and then the third thing, v'yantiv shalatzeres barur, if shvuas, the yantiv of shvuas is a clear sky, zaru chitim. Then you should plant wheat because it's going to grow well that year. Those are the three things he says. Now, there's an interesting letter from the Rebbe on this piece of the Gemara, these three things that Achitaifel said. <coughs> the Rebbe asks that it seems that the, f- the first and the second thing are really connected. He said, don't get involved in any machlaikas, which means, that, like, machlaikas against Dovod HaMelech, which was his downfall. So why does he say afterwards separately, do not rebel against Dovod HaMelech? And what's the connection to the third thing of uh, Tzeres? So the Rebbe says, <coughs> what this is all talking about is the proper Kabbalah Seyel Mach a person has to have in all areas. And the three areas that it says in the Mishnah, Kesatayra, Kesakamuna, Kesamalchus. Al-Tiyabu Machlekes is referring to the source of Machlekes where it says it in the Torah, the Machlekes of Kairach. That's where it says in the Torah, the Minyan Machlekes. So that's the Indian of Kesa Kohona. Al-Timrud Machlekes is the Kesa Malchus, the Malchus of Dovra Melech. And then uh, Shvuis is Torah, Kesa Torah. And regarding all these three areas, if a person goes with his own Seichel and he calculates and therefore he comes to his own conclusions, he's going to end up making a mistake. And therefore he's saying you have to have the proper Kabbalah Tzal Malchus Shemaim and all these three areas. And the Rebbe says, when you get to Chitim, the Shavuos, Chitim is the Ma'echal Adam, where a person eats bread, that refers to Teireh. So a person, Eitz Adas was also made out of Chita. Why? What was the problem with Eitz Adas? Because it was with, with Seichel, that to serve the Eibish only with Seichel, so then you end up in the wrong place. By Matan Teireh, the Chiddush of Matan Teireh was that the Eibish that gives you the Teireh, and you know that it's not just Seichel, it's the Eibish's Teireh. So that, that's the, the connection here of Chitim to uh, Shavuos. Mazut Rama, Mazutra says, Bolul, that what he said was not if the sky is clear, then it's a good time to plant wheat, but he says if the sky is actually cloudy, it's a good time to plant wheat. Itma Amri Nardoy Mishmed Rab a third opinion of what he said was, Loi Bolul Bolul Mamish, he didn't say if it's a clear sky completely, Veloi Bolul Bolul Mamish, or he didn't also say that it was a totally cloudy sky, Ela Philo Bolul, what he meant was a sky that is. Uh, Cloudy, but Veruach Tzvainitz Minash Vasai. And then there's a, a, a uh, northern wind that's coming and blowing away the, sky, the, the uh, clouds. Zehu that, that's So then it's butter, then it becomes clear. So meaning it's both really. It's bottle and then it becomes butter. It was cloudy and it becomes clear. Then you know that you should uh, plant wheat in that this season. Okay, so now the Gemara brings another. Uh, here, so it's, it, one of the things he's talking about is when you have a sign to know that it's going to be a good season to plant wheat. So the Gemara brings another. A source where it says about how you know what, what's, what's good for, for planting wheat. We learned this on what Rav, uh, Rav Dimi by, by, uh, again, Rav Yitzhak Barav Dimi said, when you see it's a good time to plant wheat. And the Motzi Yomtev of the last day of Sukkis, Everyone would look at the smoke that came up from the Maroche, from the fire in the Mizbeach, in the Beis Hamikdash. So, not to clap it's off, if they saw that the smoke that's going up is tilting towards the, towards the north. Now, when it's tilting towards the north, what does that mean? That the wind that's blowing at it is blowing from the south, from Dorim. That's why it's going towards the north. So, in such a case, Anim Smechim, the poor people are all going to be happy. But a balabatim, but uh, the the house owners, meaning the richer people, at save him. They're going to be sad. Why is this? That means it's going to be a lot of extra rain. And what's going to happen is 
it's going to grow a lot of produce. So therefore, the Aniyim, there's going to be a lot. But Upeiris Markivim. But then what that means is, for those people that have a lot of wheat stored away in their storehouses, they won't be able to continue storing it too much because there's going to be too much moist, moisture and it's going to get, uh, it's going to rot. And therefore, you're going to have to take everything out of the storehouses. So food is going to be plentiful and cheap. But for the, for the rich people, they're going to lose money because they're not going to have to sell it on a cheaper price. Not to clap If they see that the... The, uh, the smoke of the Marach is going towards the Dorim, which means that there's a wind coming from the north. Then, Aniyam at Sevim, then the poor people are going to be sad. Balabatim smechem. Then the Balabatim, they're going to want to be happy. Because this means there's going to be rain, but not a lot. There's going to be a little bit of rain. And therefore, Pedis mishtamrim. So it's not going to be too moist, and whatever is stored in the storehouses are going to be kept well, and therefore they're going to be able to sell their produce on a, an expensive price. Not the Klapi Mizrach, if it's going towards the east, which means that there's a wind coming out of the west, then a Kelsmechen. In, th- in such a case, a wind, a might of wind, everybody's happy. Because in such a case, it means that it's going sh- to rain just the right amount. Not too little, not too much. It's going to rain enough that it's going to be, an- it's going to grow enough, and therefore there'll be enough for the poor people to eat. And at the same time, it's not going to destroy, it's not going to cause that what's stored is being- going to rot because of too much, mo- too much uh, moisture. So that's just right. <coughs> So, which means again, the a wind that comes from the west is good. Klape Maidev, if it's tilting towards the west, which means that the wind is coming from the east, then Akailat Seven. Over here, everybody is going to be sad because then what it means is that there's going to be no rain at all. If there's no rain at all, then everybody is going to be sad about this. Or Mamish, very little rain. Come out, no rain. So, therefore, everybody is going to be sad about this. Okay, so what do you see from what it says over here in the Gemara? That when the wind comes from the west, so then everybody's happy. When the wind comes from the east, then everybody is sad. So the Gemara asks a contradiction on this. But in Abraisa we learned, and it says, Mizrachis, that when the wind comes from the east, Lo'ilam Yofa. There everybody says, that's good, that's the best. Everybody's happy about this. Maravis, when the wind comes from the west, Lo'ilam Kasha, that's always difficult and that's bad. So it's the exact opposite of what we just said. Now the Gemara brings the continuation of what it says in that Braise. Ruach, it's finest Yafel lechitim. When there's a wind from the north, that's good for the wheat. Bishash evi shlish. When the wheat is growing and it's a third ripe, and there's a wind that blows from the north, so then it's that's that's beneficial for the wheat. If a kosher is asim, but it's going to be not good for the olives that are growing. Bishash yanitzu. When the olives begin to bud and begin to grow. On the other hand, when there's a wind that comes from the north, or from the south, that is, that's going to be bad for the wheat that grew a third, and and it's good for the olives that begin to bud and grow. And about this last point that the said, Rav Yosef said, a simon to, to know that the wind, which wind is good for the wheat and which wind is good for the olives, Shulchan B'tzafim, the fact that the Shulchan in the Beis HaMikdash, the Shulchan was on the north side, and Umenayre B'dorim, and the Menayre was on the west of the, in, inside the Beis HaMikdash, right, on the south, sorry, yeah. So, hi, Mar Bididei, so the Shulchan, which is on the, on the north, which you have the bread on the Shulchan, which is baked from the, the wheat, so the wind that comes from the north, like the Shulchan, which is on the north, Mar day that causes that the wheat should grow better. And Vahai, Mar day And but the wind that comes from the south, which is like the menaida that's on the south. And what do you need for the menaida? You need the olive oil, so that's better for the olives. Okay, well that, this is the second, explaining the second half of the Braisa. But the question of is, regarding the first half of the Braisa, regarding the wind, that first we said that the, the, the western wind is good. And then in this Braisa, it says, no, that it's the eastern wind. The Mizrachis is always good. So the Gemara answers, like, Kashi, it's not a contradiction. Ha, lon. The second Braise here is speaking about, for us over here, living in Bovel. And on Bovel, they live in a valley lower down where there's um, always a lot of moisture over there. And therefore, they don't need so much rain at all. They need very, very little rain. So therefore, when you have a wind that comes from the east, which means that there's going to be very little rain, it's actually good. Because otherwise, it's anyways, like, it could become very swampy. And v'ha'aluhu, but when it said in the first price that they need the wind from the west that shows that there's going to be more rain, that's an Eretz Yisrael, where it's further higher up in a mountain, and therefore they need a lot of rain. That's, uh, that's uh, what they rely on. And therefore over there, it's the western wind, which is a good sign for a lot of rain. 
Tanya in another price we learned Abishal Laima. Abishal said Yamtiv Shalatzer is borrowed. Like we said before, that when the Shavuos is a Yamtiv, which is a clear sky, Simen Yafe Lachalashana Kula. So it's not only over here, he says not only for the wheat, but the Bechlal is a good sign for the entire year. Amar Rav Zvid. Rav Zvid said, Hi, Yoyim Ekama Derei Shata, the first day of the new year. I Chamim, if it's hot, that means Kula Shata Chamima, that the entire year, or the Rashbam says, most of the year is going to be hot. I Karer, if it's a cold day, Kula Shata Karira, that most of the year is going to be cold. Lamai Naf Gimena, what's the relevance? Uh, uh, no, this is going on the Shoshana. So the Gemara says, Lamai Naf Gimena, what's the relevance of this? He comes to tell you uh, the weather forecasting. What was Rav Zvid uh, trying to say by this? Says the Gemara, <coughs> the relevance is to know that philosophy should kain gadol. That kain gadol has to know the, this, this weather. You should pay attention to the weather on Rosh Hashanah when it comes to daven. So the Gemara says in Yuma when it comes to daven Yom Kippur in the Kedush Hakadoshim. So he would daven that it should be a good year with good weather. So they shouldn't uh, the produce shouldn't be destroyed. So he has to daven according to what he sees on Rosh Hashanah. If he sees that it's going to be a very hot year, so then he's going to daven that it shouldn't be too hot. If he sees that it's going to be a cold year, he should daven that it shouldn't be too cold. Okay, this is the conclusion of this piece of Agadet uh, that was brought up because we mentioned uh, Achitoifel. Now the Gemara goes back to, again, the source for this concept of Matnas Shchiv Mira. So before we brought sources from Psukim and Neviim and even Psukim from Teireh, that it, it's a Mamash like a Yerushim and a But now the Gemara brings that for Ravam and Nachman, Matnas Shchiv Mira, Mid Rabbanon. The Matan of Shchiv Mira is something that Chachamim instituted, but the Rabbanon Baalma, it is no source for it in the Pasuk, Chachamim instituted this. Why? Shema Titarev Daito Yalov. No, because if you're going to say that when a shchiv a person that's on on his deathbed and he's giving a gift that it only takes effect when you can make a proper kinyan, that uh, could take some time. You have to bring proper edim and to make a proper kinyan. When this person that's so ill sees that it takes so much time to fulfill his wish, that could cause him to get very disturbed and very disappointed. And because of this itself, this anguish could cause him to even die quicker. So therefore, Hamim said that whatever he says should take effect immediately. Om Rav Nachman, so Rav Nachman said, eh, sorry, 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 the Gemara asks him this, Umi Om Rav Nachman Hachi. Is this true? Did Rav Nachman say this, that the whole Matana B'Shchiv Mirah is just something that Chachamim instituted? Oh, to consider on this is, there's something else Rav Nachman said, Vaho, Om Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said, Av agav do Om Shmuel, even though Shmuel said as follows, Hamoicher shtar lachachayv lachavere, a person that sold a document of a loan that he has. So this is a lender that has a document of a loan that he's able to collect the loan. And he sells the rights to collect this loan to his friend. Not, and then what did he do? What does the seller do? And then he goes and forgives the entire loan to the borrower. So now you can't collect anything. even after, so, no, It's forgiven. Even though you sold it already, but you still have the power to forgive that loan. Not only that, even if the one that sold it and what was the original lender died, but now the Yerish that Yarshins this loan also still has the ability to uh, be Michael this, uh, this loan. Okay, so just to explain a few details what this is based on, the Rashbamir explains, the Rishayim explain, how could you forgive something after you sold it? Did you sell the rights of this loan to someone else, to collect this loan to someone else? So the answer basically is you could only sell this loan partially. You're selling the actual document, which gives you the rights to collect it. But the actual shibud itself that lies upon the person himself, every time you borrow money, besides the fact that now there's a lien on your properties, on your monies to pay up that loan, there's a shibud haguf, there's a shibud that lies on the person himself that you are responsible to pay. That is something that you can't sell. So even after you sell the rights of the collection of the someone else, but since the shibud haguf, which is really the source of this whole loan here, that you have the rights to collect it, that's something that uh, you, you, you can't, that, is, that, that the person owes you the money, that's something that you always have the right to be meichel on. And therefore, once you meichel that, automatically as a result, the shibut of the mamayin that is owed to you goes off as well. That's why you could be meichel. Now, after you meichel, the Rashbam here says, if you paskin like Rab Meir, which is brought in the Gemara many times, that's is done dine de garmi, which means that when you cause a direct loss to someone, even if you didn't damage, physically damage with your hands. But if you do something that causes a direct loss to someone, you have to reimburse him. So over here, when the seller caused this direct loss to the buyer, that he was Michael, this loan that he sold him, he's going to have to reimburse him. He's going to have to give him back the money that he paid for buying this loan. Right? Okay. But, but, you can, but you have the power to be Michael, this loan, and even a Yiddish also has the power to be Michael, this loan. Now on this, Rav Nachman said, 
May the Shmuel, that Shmuel will admit, Shem Nasnoi, Bemat Nashchiv Mira, that if it's a loan, a document of a loan that the lender has, and he gave it to, uh, as a gift, how? Not just as a, selling it, but he gave it as a matana of a person that is dying, and he says, I'm giving away this document of a loan as a gift to someone to be able to collect with it, that then the any Yachal Then you gave it away, and you cannot, you do not have the power to be Meichal this loan. Well, now, why is this any different? Why, when you gave it away, the matna shchivmera here, the, the one that gave it cannot be Michael this anymore? So the Gemara says, If you're going to say that the source of this concept of a matna shchivmera that it takes effect is learned from the psukim that we had before, Menatayre, and basically we're learning it from the parsha of Yerusha. And what we're saying is that when you give a matna shchivmera, it's like another form of a Yerusha. It's like someone is yashing this from you. So then I could say, That's why once you gave it away, you can't be Meichel, because it's not just a sale. When you sell a, a loan, so then as I explained before, there's still a certain Shibu, the source of the Shibu that goof that, li- that lies upon the person to pay you still remains there. You, 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 it, doesn't, it doesn't go away, so you could always be Meichel. But if it's learned from a Pasuk that it's like a Yerusha, a Yerusha, a child is Yerish, what belonged to the father completely. It, it goes completely away to the child. So over here, when you give it as a matna shchivmira, now this loan is completely given away. So therefore, it's understood why you won't be able to be meichel that. But Eli, but if you're going to say that it's just chachamim that instituted this, that the law, that when you give a matna shchivmira, it's really like a regular gift, but chachamim instituted that it should take effect even without a kinyan. If that's the point, then am I any yochalimcha? Why shouldn't you be allowed to be? Why, why is Rav Nachman saying that this is a case that is an, that is an exception, that Shmuel is made that you can't be Meichel? Why can't you be Meichel? It should be like any other gift or any other sale that when you sell or give someone a, a loan, you still could be Meichel. Right, so, so the Gemara answer is, no, it's not a question on Rav Nachman. Even though Rav Nachman himself said that it's only Medir Rabbanon, the whole Matna uh, Shechiv Mirah, Eina Shaltayre. It's not menatayda. It's just Chachamim instituted this. And really, it should be no different than any regular sale. The, the chilish of the Chachamim is that you don't need a Maisa Kenyan, but it's no stronger. It shouldn't be any stronger than any regular Kenyan. But nevertheless, of Asua Keshal Teireh. The Chachamim did make this Kenyan to be so strong, like a Yerusha Minatayda, that it's completely given away. Again, all part of the same reason. Chachamim wanted that this person that's passing away should know that what he wants, his Tzava, is so powerful that you don't need any Kenyan for it, and it's mamash like a Yerusha, in order that he shouldn't have any feeling of disappointment. This is part of the Chachamim Stakana. And therefore, in this case, by a loan, when you give it away, it will take completely effect, and the, and the giver cannot be Meichel this loan anymore.